I completed Knitmas. I am so pleased with myself. So in total, I completed 19 items in December, which sounds very, very impressive. But do remember that knit garments are very, very quick to make, especially if you have got the pattern to fit you and you've already done all the cutting out. I mean, some of these things I got done like four t-shirts in a day kind of thing. So 19 sounds impressive. <laughs> but they weren't knits. But that was the point, that was the point. I knew December was going to be a busy and semi-stressful month and I wanted to make my life as easy as possible. I knew I wanted to create things, I knew I wanted to sew things, but I also knew I was going to be vlogging daily for Vlogmas, which I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed. Whilst I always start out with really grand ideas of like, yes, that's going to be totally fine and then I'm going to put out a couple of proper videos a week as well. By the middle of the month, it all gets very, 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 very hectic and as we have seen, I didn't quite keep up with that schedule, but I did complete every day of Vlogmas almost but starting a day early meant that I had that one day of grace which I needed for the 23rd but yeah it's been a wonderful wonderful festive season and I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed watching mum and dad and I open our calendars every morning when mum's finally arrived but mum's looks beautiful now so anyway Knitmas when I did my fabric haul and plans video I did actually have Knitmas supposed to come up across the screen but somehow I managed to delete it so I just looked like an idiot going like this with a soundtrack and no no actual writing in that video but that was what was meant to happen and it was Gig Grace's idea we were talking during one of the hangouts that we did up at Big Bird's house and she said Knitmas and I completely got it wrong and thought she meant mum would knit something every day which I mean mum does anyway but not a finished garment but then she clarified and I was like yes Yes, that is a genius idea because I did have a giant pile of different types of jerseys that I really, really loved and had just not quite worked out what I wanted to do with them. Or if I had worked out what I wanted to do that with them, not really kind of made the time to do the thing. So we did the thing. First up was the Atelier Brunette Sheridan sweater and infinity scarf that went along with this. I have bought this fabric a very long time ago from one of the knitting and stitching shows. I believe I got it from Guthrie and Garni. This stuff is expensive. It was 22.50 a meter and I'd bought a specific amount to make this pattern, which I very dutifully made up in wearable muslin fodder and hated on me. And then I just did not know what to do with this beautiful and incredibly expensive jersey because I had too much for the Astoria sweaters and if I had cut out an Astoria which was my only crop sweater at the time then I would have ended up with a really giant piece left over that wasn't actually usable for anything else like a whole other garment so I held on to it until Nimbus. One of my favorite sweaters as you guys probably know is the Hey June Sheridan sweater which is what this is. It has big sleeves, it is blues on, it has a fitted waist, fitted cuffs and for me I actually make the neckline a lot bigger so it stands up like this. The neckline on the pattern is very very skinny which looks lovely but it's not per my personal preference so I just make this a little bit longer and I decided you know what I am going to use the Atelier Brunette fabric for the Sheridan sweater because it's going to be a combination I love. This stuff is so soft. So, so soft. So I cut it out. I needed to use a few pieces for the pocket facings for this and the interior waistband facing for the Sirocco that I'm wearing. Then out of the final little bits, I cut out an infinity scarf from what I had left. And I really do have just tiny, tiny scraps left of this fabric which is awesome because when something is this expensive you really want to make sure that you are buying the correct amount for the garment that you want to make this is definitely not fluff around and see fabric it's like tried and true fabric 100% really happy with how this has turned out having had my colors done black is not one of my colors but I do kind of get away with it because of the super dark hair at the moment and do you know what it has gold dots on it, which is the colour jewellery I'm supposed to be wearing. So I'm going to call this one good and very, very pleased with how it's come out. Next up is the Sirocco that I'm wearing. It's a Deer and Doe pattern, in case you didn't know. I absolutely love the Deer and Doe Sirocco. I have a few more to show you here and I've made a few over the years as well and I do wear them I find them super comfortable I was considering trying to put long sleeves on it but I'm really glad that I stuck with the short sleeves for all of my Sirocco's because it does give it more flexibility and this is definitely something that I wear in the summer and autumn with cardigans over the top and then at this time of year with a full jumper over the top now this fabric is from the very lovely Alex and she sent it to me quite a few years ago now and I've been hoarding it for the longest time. She sent me three meters. I made, I think it was the McCall 7634 jumper but with the hood taken off and the placket taken out. And I fully intended to make the jogging bottoms that went with that pattern out of the remainder of the fabric but those are very wide leg trousers and this is quite a narrow fabric and it just 
wasn't going to go on. So this has gone back into the stash and I've been like, oh, I need to make this with it or this with it or this with it. I've just not been able to settle on anything. And then I was like, you know, let's try it with Knitmas. Let's get it out. Let's see what we can do, see how much fabric I have. And I had been planning to make just the bottoms of the Sirocco with this fabric because as I say, I have a jumper that matches, but I thought, mm, let's just see if I can get the bodice of the Deer and Doe Sirocco out of what fabric I've got because this is a directional print amongst other things and I just squeezed it out. As I mentioned I had to cut the pocket facings and the interior waistband because I do mine slightly differently to the pattern. I had to cut that out the Atelier Brunette fabric but I had enough of that to do it so that's fine. I had to cut the sides or the back part of the pocket on the cross grain rather than the straight up grain so if you look really closely the flowers and feathers on that part are going sideways rather than up and down but it's a busy enough print that I don't think anyone would notice. So I definitely think this is a very versatile piece that can be dressed up or dressed down depending on what you're going to be doing in it. I find it super comfortable. The only downside is it is a jumpsuit which does mean that you end up like this every time you have to go to the bathroom. But that's what happens when you wear all jumpsuits. Such is life. Next up was the day where I was making all my gable tees. First up was this black lemon and parrot print from Flamingo Fabrics. I'm really sorry that this particular print isn't available anymore. I made the three quarter sleeve version because I was being a bit dim while I was cutting this out and if I had staggered the front and back pieces I would have had enough for the long sleeves but you know what I love this sleeve length it's not the end of the world I think it's absolutely gorgeous I love the gable especially for prints like this because it shows them off so so well there are no darts no neck bands to break up the print I think it is a really good t-shirt for a very loud bright bold print like this so much so that I have actually made four more so this was the remnant that mum had from some Lady McElroy fabric that I got from the Goldhawk Road. They don't do this base anymore. I think they have a little bit of this exact print left, but I think it's in the remnants and they currently have 50% off their remnants. So if you want to check that out, I'll put the, the link in the description down below. Love how this one has turned out though. And thank you very much to mum for giving me her excess fabric. Then we have pink shells. This is when I worked out that yes, actually I could have got the long sleeves out of all of them if I had wanted to. I really, really like this. I like that it's quite a bold bright print. I really like this print. It's again from Flamingo Fabrics. I bought a meter of it and again this one is not available but I will link to the shop down below. They have some gorgeous prints on there. The next one is this lemon leafy print. This was in the citrus collection and I was going to leave it there but I was like I was like well you know what I'm working my way through my jerseys. Why not get this one done at the same time and again love this, love the bright colours, will wear this a lot. The final one is a viscose jersey that I got from a Polish company which I cannot pronounce but I will put a link to their website down below. I couldn't see this print available anymore but they do have some really beautiful prints on there. Again the vintage length sleeves because they're not quite three quarter length sleeves. Gable t-shirt shows off the print really well, I love it, it's one of my favourites for bright bright prints as I think I've said a couple of times now. Next day I had my two Sirocco's to do. So I've got this jer cotton jersey thistle print, then this French terry with butterflies and cherry blossoms all over it. Both of these were from Flamingo Fabrics. This one isn't available anymore but this print is available and it's actually one of their print on demand so you can have it on a lot of different bases. I've never made a Sirocco out of cotton jersey and actually I really like how this feels and looks on. It's much lighter than the French Terries, a little bit easier to get on. It probably won't be quite so warm but this might be a good one for cooler summer days as well as spring and autumn and I just loved this print. Really really pleased with how this has come out. I've got a little bit left of both of these and I'm going to buy some white French terry from Lily and Mimi and colour block some slouchy jumpers to go over the top of them because I really enjoyed that look with this one here. So yeah very pleased with how this one came out. This one is as I say a French terry. Now all French terries aren't created equal even though they seem to have the same amount of stretch between this one and this one. I can get this one on and off really really easily. This one is a little bit of a fight to get in and out of. I can do it but it's not the most fun experience I've ever had. So if you do decide to make one of these out of French terry really really check the stretch factor. Although like I say this one and this one do have the same stretch content in them so I'm not sure why this one's really easy to get on and off and this one's not so much. It is worth it though because I really like how it looks when it's on so very pleased with all three of my Sirocco's. Okay next up we have one of my woven projects and this was a refashion. I had made this red silk Dupioni dress 
many years ago and it did have a by hand london and a bodice and a waistband on it and then this is a five panel circle skirt i got it out and tried it on for the dressmakers ball because my dress plans failed miserably and um i actually split the zip on the under dress even with the corset on i was thinking yeah corset that'll get my waist down to the 26 inches that it needs to be not so much and the zip went up and then the zip split and then i had to fight my way out of that dress so i was just like oh do i put in a new zip and just you know wait and hope that i'm going to get back down to that weight again or do i take the bodice off and keep it which i have done and make a new bodice with the remnants of the fabric that i had left because i had a fairly decent chunk of this left although no full width long pieces it was all smaller pieces which is why i went for the butterick 6380 bodice i hate the sleeves on that dress but i didn't know what other sleeves to put on so i ended up taking these little sleeves from this lacala pattern and smooshing those on and whilst i love how it looks these are incredibly restrictive i had to actually get mum to come down here and zip me up and then unzip me from this dress for the twirls because i could not get in, in and out of this by myself having said all that i absolutely love how this looks with this little kind of cap sleeve coming off of it so i'm going to play around and make it so that the cap sleeve has a little bit more room in it but keep the cap sleeve because i love 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 how it looks the butterick 6380 is one of my favorites i've done a full review on this one i know it's a pattern that's out of print but if you find it and you can get yourself a copy i highly recommend highly highly recommend the only change that i have made is that i have put darts in at the back rather than the gathers there's gathers at the front and gathers at the front shoulder seam for the bodice to give the fullness over the bust but i just thought the gathers at the back which is what is usually in this pattern in this stiffer fabric which has zero drape I thought they would look really odd so i've switched them over to darts and i actually really like it and i think i might be doing that for all of my other ones going forward because whilst i like the gathered look on some of my other ones it does every now and again it's like oh you got poofy back and i think i prefer the straight back so now that i know that i can do that i probably will on all of these dresses going forward and as I say, I'm going to keep this sleeve option, but just tweak it a little bit so it gives me a little bit more mobility. So just slash and spread so that there's a bit more room in here because I love how this one looks. And then I love this bodice with all of the other types of long bishopy sleeves on it that I have tried, which again, you can see in that review video. Very happy with this. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And I have quite a lot of Silk Do Fiona in my stash, so I can 100% see myself making some different iterations of this in different colours. I love it. It's beautiful. Next up we have the McCall's 8145 which I have done a sew along for. I really 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 like this pattern. This is the first official one I've made because the sew along was actually a wearable muslin which I do wear occasionally and do really really like. This foxy print fabric was a sweatshirting with a really beautiful fleecy back on it that I got from Ibiza. It's not super super stretchy so I wasn't 100% sure what to do with it but it was so soft and so pretty and so glittery that I had to get it. I had some of this grey French terry left over from Lily and Mimi and making my geeky jumpers project so I thought you know what that's quite stretchy so let's use that for the waistband the collar and the cuffs which are all the bits that need to stretch and then we use the stable jersey for the body of it and i love how this has turned out it's definitely possible to wear this by itself as you will see in the twirls although you can see my slip poking out just a little bit in those twirls i personally would probably feel more comfortable having something on underneath of this like a vest or a top of some description or another but this is so so soft as i say on the inside so it did feel very nice wearing it just with my slip i've made a lot of changes to this pattern which i do talk about in the sew along the sizing on this pattern is one of the worst that i've come across from the big four although fingers crossed everything's changing i just haven't bought any new patterns to see the changes that have come out people have been telling me that there are finished garment measurements on the back of pattern envelopes now so that is awesome but yeah i really like how this has turned out with all the tweaks that i've done to it to get it to turn out like this so glad that i finally got this fabric made up though i love it next up we have the megan nielsen briar t-shirt this fabric is a very stable jersey it only has two-way stretch so stretch across not up and down i didn't know that when i bought it i got it from the same place that i got the floral viscose so again that's going to be listed in the description down below it works really really well for the briar t-shirt because that's oversized and it's not meant to be clingy i've made the briar before and i really really liked it 
on other people but on me the high-low hem is not doing me any favors whatsoever so I decided to alter that so that the front was a lot lower and then the back was a lot higher so there is still a small dip a very small dip between the front and the back but this now crops right at my waist and I think works really well for me. I've styled it in the twirls with my denim skirt but I probably will wear this with my jogging bottoms. Because it's not tuck inable I would prefer it with my jogging bottoms over skirts. Skirt was just what I had down here at the moment. I'm really glad that I refashioned it. I really like it. I will make more of these. I used to wear these kind of t-shirts quite a lot in the summer months. I had a bunch of them from H&M that were kind of this loose not too fitted look but because they cropped at the waist I thought they worked really well for my figure so yeah very pleased with this one nice to have this fabric finally sewn up it's really really cute I like it a lot we have another Sheridan this time in a French terry again from the very lovely Alex the same lady that sent me this one this is one of the first presents Alex has ever sent to me and it has kitty cats on it and it has really cute kitty cats on it. Seen Alex make a dress for herself in this and I commented and said it's wonderful and she bought me some which is incredibly kind of you Alex, thank you. I love how this has turned out. I had just under two meters of this fabric and I was hoping to get a deer and doe Sirocco out of it to the point that I'd cut the cherry blossom and the thistle one out. I started, I used those as pattern pieces because of this print. You really didn't want to end up with, you know, like an unfortunate dot crotch placement situation or bum placement situation either and I just didn't have enough fabric even without trying to pattern match so I kind of went back to the drawing board and I was like oh gosh what do I do what do I do I don't want to waste any of this fabric and I thought you know what I'm gonna make something I love out of it the Sheridan and I do love it and then the fabric that I have left I can either color block or I can pass it on to somebody else that will be able to colour block a sweater from it as well. And that's what I'm going to do. I've put a pile together of a bunch of different fabrics and offcuts that I've got from all the bits that I've been making this month. And I'm passing those on because there is enough fabric left for somebody else to have something wonderful from it. And I already have this wonderful, wonderful jumper. So again, thank you Alex for sending me such wonderful fabric. I love how this one has turned out. The Sheridan is definitely one of my favourites. Next up we have another favourite top, it is the Adrian blouse from Friday Pattern Company. I have made a few tweaks to this one, I've added on these really deep cuffs, the pattern itself comes with an elasticated channel at the bottom of the sleeves which is great, but I, for a long sleeve t-shirt like this, especially if I can't wear a cardigan over it, which I can't with these ones, I want to have my all of my arm being warm. So I've added on these long cuffs which I think I actually got from the 8145. I have lowered the front by an inch and kept the back at the height of the original pattern and purely and simply because of my preference of how I like my t-shirts and things to look. I used this stretch velvet that I got from the textile center which is no longer available. I bought five meters of it. I have made a jackie dress from it which I love and I had a really decent chunk left over so I managed to get the Adrian t-shirt out of it and again I have some left over which has gone into that bundle of decent sized scraps that aren't enough for one entire garment but definitely can be colour blocked. I'm really tempted to keep it to try and make another Rigel Bomber jacket which I'm going to show you in a minute but I do think I ought to pass it on to somebody else because I can see myself getting obsessed with Rigel Bomber jackets and making lots of them and whilst they're awesome and I will wear them I don't know if I'm going to wear them that much and that's definitely something that I need to think about because I do have a lot of clothes fully aware of that so yeah I need to be very considerate about what new clothes I make and what I am adding to my wardrobe but very pleased with how this has come out I think it's absolutely gorgeous and very comfortable to wear next up we have my epic fail of the month <laughs> this is the Paola tea from named patterns and it is in this ribbed jersey from Lady McElroy I think it's called Rubicon the colors of this are amazing and I absolutely love 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 the colors of this I bought this fabric as a remnant in their 50% off remnant sale last Christmas. I might have accidentally spent quite a lot of money in their remnant sale this year, which there will be a fabric haul coming to you very soon. Well, as soon as it arrives. I wanted to give it a try. I've never worked with a rib knit that is this ribbed and stretchy before. It is super narrow and I was so careful when I was cutting it out. I was so careful when I was sewing it not to stretch anything out and it still ended up not working. It's not what I intended. I wanted a very close fitting jumper that could be layered under dresses and this thing has so much excess under this it, it just everywhere it's just not worked I've not worked with fabric like this before and um yeah not sure that I will again to be honest 
I love the colours, I love the print, the fabric itself, I do not like the feel of it on me. It's a polyester viscose spandex mix and it's scratchy. It's really really scratchy. So this was bought as I say as wearable muslin fodder to see if I could recreate some of my favourite next jumpers or little tops that I have. If they all behave like this then the answer is no. There is some absolutely gorgeous rib knit fabric from I think it's called Meat Milk but it's incredibly expensive and so I wanted to practice on something ahead of buying myself some of those jerseys to make myself those t-shirts and I'm really glad that I did because no just just no nope 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 loads of people gave me loads of different tips for working with this kind of stuff so obviously don't stretch it out be really careful add in a um, stable elastic to the shoulders to help stabilize those all those kinds of things and yeah none of none of those made much of a difference I think I think what needed to happen is I needed to see if I could iron it 100% flat cut it out like that it would have looked tiny once I had sewn it up but because it is that stretchy it probably would have fitted me better I might experiment in the future because I do enjoy wearing this kind of top but this was an utter fail. Never mind. On to something that was an absolute success. The Paper Cut Patterns Rigel Bomber Jacket out of the Lady McElroy Velvet that I have had in my stash for the longest time. And I've had so many different ideas for this velvet and if you watched my Cobra Corsage plans video at the beginning of the year, a smoking jacket. Then I almost bought four more meters to make myself the fanciest dressing gown ever but that order got cancelled because the other fabric I had in there they didn't have enough of it and I'm glad, I'm glad of that. So I had two meters of this. It has some stretch to it but not enough. I don't know why I bought two meters because usually this kind of fabric I would immediately make a jacket dress with it but yeah, to, I, I mean it was expensive, maybe that was why. But it suddenly occurred to me that I have a bunch of the Gucci bomber jackets pinned on my Pinterest board and I love them all. The very lovely Alex, this, this video is sponsored by Alex. The very lovely Alex had sent me this ribbing when she sent me the other fabrics as well. So this one and this one, she sent me a bunch of this ribbing. This one is my absolute favorite and they do still have it available. So I will link it down below for you. It's actually a navy stripe with red white and green on it but I think I get away with it because the navy is not right next to the black of the velvet. I decided that we uh, I mean we all know how I feel about garments that aren't lined not a fan so I decided to fully line this one and Parshan had traced out this pattern and had done all the lining pattern pieces for me so today Sean or you know Nitmus Sean just had to cut it out and sew it up. I was talking to you guys during one of the hangouts and I was just like I'm just gonna do it and you were like no make a muslin and I was like no I'm gonna do the thing <laughs> It's like this um Spock and Kirk thing that I'm just I see everywhere. It's like I'm gonna do the thing. Honestly, I've I've really 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 got lucky. The fact that this fits me as well as it does. The only thing I wish I had made the sleeves an inch and a half longer. I'm not gonna let that stop me from wearing this one. I love it. I have fully lined the bodice in this fluffy jersey that I got from Guthrie and Garni at one of the shows. Then the sleeves needed to be slippery so I've used this moire lining from Minerva. I am I am over the moon with how this has turned out. It fits me so so well. I have cropped this by two inches and I have gone for a much smaller size than the pattern recommends. Purely and simply because I don't like oversized clothing so I wanted to make this work for me and I'm so glad that I did both of those things crop it and go for a smaller size because I love this. I have some other velvet in my stash that's got lemurs on it which has no stretch in it at all this is not actually supposed to be a stretchy garment and I'm really tempted I'm really really tempted I just need to find the right color ribbing for it and then if I can I think a navy's it. One of the reasons that I don't wear my stretchy jumpers frequently is because I prefer the ease of being able to take cardigans on and off. So I can imagine myself wearing this as a cardigan in the colder months and then as a light jacket when it gets a little bit warmer. So happy with this. I love it. Next up is one of my favourite creations from this month. It is the McCall's 7319 which I have done a sew along for here. I've made a lot of changes to this dress to get it to look like the pattern envelope but I'm so glad that I did. So this fabric is all the way from Lithuania. The very lovely Duvalet had a favourite shop of hers that I think was closing down. It might have been one of her friends and she sent me a couple of images of some of the fabrics that were up for grabs and there were these tiger panels. Believe it or not these this is made from tigers. You can see there's some eyeballs on the shoulders. There is 
some eyeballs down here. Yeah, you can see it's an upside down tiger face. I bought one, two, three, four, five, six of these panels, not knowing what on earth I was going to do with them, but I just absolutely love them. I also bought some peacock print jersey which i had intended to make exactly the same dress from but that one i've got three peacocks and they aren't mirrored and it's an entire peacock the whole way over so i'm gonna have to be really careful about how that one gets made up so that's one of the ones that got put back into the stash because i need some this there needs to be some thought that goes into that print but with this one there wasn't any lines in it it was just a continuous print so this is actually the middle of the print here so it's mirrored as well so i decided to just make sure that i didn't end up with tiger's eyes on my boobs or tiger's eyes in this this area here and then just cut the fabric out and ignore the fact that there was tiger's faces on it and i love how this has turned out this is definitely one of my favorite makes from this month along with my ride your bomber jacket i think this is absolutely glorious it is so over the top loud and colorful but it is me we're talking about and i do like loud over top and colorful <laughs> if if you if you couldn't tell. I love how this looks and I want to make more of these. This is a super comfortable dress and it's definitely one of those ones that looks like you've made a real effort. I wore this on Christmas day and it was super, super comfortable even after the ginormous dinner that we ate. So yeah, I do want to make more of these. I have fabric in my stash, two viscose jerseys for two more of the floaty ones, but I can imagine that if I buy more cotton jersey in the future with prints on it, I'll want one of these. So having said that, the fact that I'm, if I buy cotton jersey again, it's going to be enough length to buy, to make dresses like this. I won't be buying any more meter lengths of prints that I love to make t-shirts because I have an entire wardrobe full of printed t-shirts now and I have a lot a lot of plain viscose jersey to make more t-shirts out of and I don't wear them that frequently but I do reach for my dresses all of the time as you guys probably know from if you've watched any of my channel I'm definitely a dress fan so I'm going to try not to buy any more jersey prints because I really really don't need any more printed jersey clothing but if I stumble across a print that I absolutely adore like the lemons or the parrot and lemons either of those ones I wish I had enough to make a dress because I would wear that way more than I'm going to wear the t-shirts and I'm going to get I am going to wear the t-shirts but I would wear both of those things way more if they were dresses. That's the plan going forward. No more cotton jersey, no more viscose jersey, none of those, unless I buy enough to make a dress. That's the plan. I've had this Brielle wool in my stash for a very long time. I actually have quite a lot of it left over. They have a small amount of it available on Sherwood's if you would like some for yourself. It's 80% wool, 20% polyamide suiting, and it is absolutely beautiful. Mum loves this to the point where she's eyeing up the bits that I have left, but I'm planning on making a pair of trousers and a jacket from that to go with the skirt and the waistcoat that you can just see back there. Now the Patreon peeps did vote for me to make up the holster crazy seam skirt and to go with the waistcoat out of this fabric and I made a muslin and I like it but I didn't love it and it also wasn't giving me the fullness that I wanted I had an inspiration image this is Penny Heartbleed and she is wearing Emmy Design of Sweden I love how this looks I wanted this look and I decided to go with the three-quarter circle skirt which has worked out perfectly in my opinion. This was really really easy to make. I have a full tutorial on how to draft and sew a three-quarter circle skirt. I love it. This is going to get worn so 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 much. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I love the amount of movement in it. I love the fullness of it. I prefer it over the fullness of a half circle skirt but it's not as much as a full circle either fabric hungry wise or kind of like wearing wise. I have lined this with some viscose acetate and this is the skirt from the Butterick 6380. It works really well as a lining because it's a line so it's still full enough at the bottom that you don't need to worry about it restricting your movement but it's not as full as your outer skirt so it's also not going to take up as much fabric and if the wind blows then fingers crossed the uh, the lining isn't going to do you dirty and show underwear to the world. I have used bias binding to finish this off and I went for this beautiful sunshine yellow because I'd lined my waistcoat in a mustard and cream silk which I will show you in a moment. Love how this has come out. I'm going to wear this loads. Now I've got to make the jacket and the trousers to go with my four-piece suit. It'll be fine. 
it'll be fine. Really quickly, this is the waistcoat that I was talking about. It is the McCall's 5193, which I believe is an out of print pattern. A very lovely Daisy May sent it to me as part of a KB pattern swap. That's the silk that I've lined it with. I made this ages ago out of a 65 centimeter remnant of the Brielle wool that I got from Lady McElroy, which they do have some available in their remnant sale. So if you would like some and you want a waistcoat like this, then I will link to that down below. So the final thing I've made in December is the Vogue 8772 shirt. The Patreon peeps voted for this one and I'm really glad that you guys did. I really like it. It's a really nice darted shirt. It has fisheye darts in the front and the back. It has bust darts at the side. I knew that I liked the tie at the front but I have read reviews on this pattern and loads of people said how restrictive the bow tie was if you did it integrally as the pattern would have you sew it. So this is supposed to take the place of the collar and collar stand in this pattern. I can see what people mean because this bow is huge by the way. I added in the diagonal bit at the bottom that it that's not part of it. I pref just prefer how the bottom of ties look if they have that diagonal point to them. I am going to make this shirt again, but if I decided to make a matching bow to go with it, I'm going to thin down the bit that goes around the neck because this is really thick. And I'm also going to make it just a little bit shorter because it is quite a lot as is but i'm glad i've tried it this fabric is a viscose maracane that came from my sister-in-law's stash it was originally from the textile center it was one of those ones that i kept eyeing up and i really wish i had bought because i would have loved to have make it, made a dress out of it i just never did and then it went out of stock and when i was at my sister-in-law's for the dressmaker's ball i cleaned up her fabric stash i saw that she had it mentioned that i wished i bought some and she gave me hers which was incredibly kind of her so thank you big bird it's really really lovely fabric it's a really really lovely shirt it will get made again i think this is a really nice piece the sleeves are full without being as giant as my giant pirate sleeve shirts which means that this is great for the sort of two meters or less cuts of fabric that i have and i do have quite a few of those just really really pleased with this one thank you very much to the patreon peeps for voting for this one out of the three patterns i gave you to choose from it's nice to have another fitted shirt pattern in my arsenal of things that i can make out of smaller amounts of fabric so yeah yeah, really pleased with how this one has turned out and thank you to the patreon peeps for voting for it so that was the last piece that i made in december i mean technically it's the i think it's the 28th of december it's that weird period of time between christmas and new year where you just don't know what day of the week it is what your name is and what you should be doing with yourself i've had a couple of days of just chilling and reading and doing very little and that has been glorious but today i was just like no i need to go and do something i need to be in the sewing room so i thought i would come down and film this guy for you guys i didn't get around to my christmas pjs i will make them but they just didn't get made in time for christmas this year and the other thing i didn't get finished was the 9076 the skirt is still here still doing its biasy thing that's definitely going to have dropped completely on the bias when i come around to getting that dress finished again it's one of those ones that technically i had time for but i got to a point where i was just like i don't want to make mistakes and i've left two fairly involved woven projects that definitely need concentration right till the end and uh yeah i decided that i didn't have the mental brain power to get those done well especially as i was supposed to be filming a sew along for the 9076 so that is one of the first things that's going to be coming in january next year i am so over the moon with all the stuff that i've got sewn this month i'm really glad that i only had the one one epic fail but so many different ones that have come out so so well and some of them better than i imagined especially this uh rigel bomber jacket so you'll have to let me know in the comment section down below which one is your favorite and why i I'm not sure. I think I think it might be the Rigel Brummer jacket and the dress for me. But I'd be interested to hear about your favourites. If you've enjoyed having a look at the things I've made this month, you might like this video here.